Good Tuesday morning, guys, and uh, happy second week of e-learning. Today is April 7th, 2020. It is Tuesday, and it is our first day of e-learning for this second week. Again, I hope that uh, you guys are um, able to get through this week pretty smoothly and pick up from where we where we left off besides writing. Writing, we're going to introduce poetry, but other than that, guys, um, Good morning. I wish you well. I want to give a huge shout out uh, to Lucas. Uh, over the weekend, he wrote me a letter, um, and it was tremendous. And then I want to give you, everybody, a huge shout out for all the work that you did last week um, during our first week of e-learning. You guys did great. I'm super proud of you. And let's have another great week of learning for this second week of e-learning. For reading, we're going to continue using The Three Little Pigs, and last week I read three different stories of The Three Little Pigs. I read one where the ending was the big bad wolf used his um, huffing and puffing power to blow up balloons. I read an original story, and then I read, read the true story of The Three Little Pigs told by Alexander T. Wolf. Now, this week, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to build off of that. We're going to continue continue using the three little pigs to make a graphic organizing t-chart and then we will use that graphic organizer that t-chart and turn it into what's called a Venn diagram but first I want to talk about our graphic organizer I used the pencil and pen to compare and contrast uh, last week and we filled out a graphic organizer this week we're going to use the three little pigs I've got the graphic organizer right here on the whiteboard you can see I put up in the title the three little pigs our characteristics that we're going to name goes in the middle. And then we're going to use that last story that I read, which is the true story of the three little pigs told by Alexander T. Wolf. Now, a few things that we want to, want to talk about as our characteristics. One, we want to talk about the characters. We always want to label characters and the setting. Where does the story take place? You're going to see that I'm going to say that there is a problem and a solution. So every story usually has a problem and then there is a solution. Whether we think that that solution is a good solution or a bad solution, there is always a solution to a problem. And then we're going to use conclusions. So five things that I want to list. I want to list my characters, my setting, a problem, a solution, and then the conclusion. Now, I don't want to just use only those five characteristics. I might use other characteristics and you will see that I will list some characteristics on our graphic organizer. Now, I am going to uh, fill in a lot of the characteristics. However, some of the characteristics I'm going to leave open for you guys to complete in our lesson today. As you can see in my t-chart, I've started to fill out a little bit of it. I didn't want to completely do it because I want to ask you guys to do a few things on your graphic organizer. Um, for the three little pigs and the true story of the three little pigs, I put three characteristics down. First, I said the characters, then I said the setting, and then what types of houses. Types of houses was not one of the original uh, characteristics I told you, but that was one that you can add. So um, <clears throat> you are going to be able to give me the problem and the solution, and then I'm going to ask for a couple more things. Give me just a second and let's go over these. For your characters, the original story is over here to my left, and the true story told by Al T. Wolf is to my right. So, the characteristics, who are the characters? Well, in the original story, you have the mother, because she sends off the, the three little pigs to build their own house. You've got the three pigs, they're all, they're all boys, and then you've got the big bad wolf. Now, on the true story of the three little pigs, your characters, Alexander T. Wolf, he is the narrator. He is the one that tells the story. And then you have the three pigs. In this story, they're all boys. I talk about the setting. Where's the setting take place? In the three little pigs, it, it really takes place at the pigs' house. Now, in the true story of the three little pigs, okay, it starts out at Al's house. He's making a cake for his grandmother uh, at his house. And then he goes to the pigs' house. And then at the end, he gets sent to jail. So he goes to the country jail. And then what types of houses? I do believe that... Um, in the th original Three Little Pigs that I read, I'll go back and check, but the houses were straw, wood, and brick. 
Again, I will check. I know the straw and the brick. I'll check on the wood. Um, and then, in the true story of Alexander T. Wolf, told by Alexander T. Wolf, the houses were made of straw, stick, and brick. Okay, so you know you might have a slight difference in the in the wood between uh, wood and stick there. Um, <clears throat> but what I want you to do is I want you to think about the problem and the solution. And if you can't really figure that out, then two other things that I want you to think of is um, why is the, why is the wolf visiting the pig's house? Like what what's the reason for the pig to go there? Or excuse me, the wolf to go to the pig's house. So what's the reason the wolf goes? And then when the wolf knocks on the door or is at the door, how do the the pigs respond? What what do they do? How do they respond to the wolf being there? And then we'll go over this. Um, we'll continue on this uh, tomorrow and, and continue to build upon this and finish our graphic organizer. But I want you to think about a couple of different things. And you can write this. Um, I'm going to actually uh, not even worry about doing it in... Um, a graphic organizer form I'm going to do it in a, a Google form for you so like you don't have to worry about the graphic organizer but I want your answers of um, what's a problem what's the solution how does the or what's the wolf's reason for going there and then how do the pigs respond once the wolf knocks on the door so there's a few different things that you can um, write about on a Google form okay you'll be able to find that either on the website or in my Google slide presentation. Okay guys, you know, even though it is not Monday, Tuesday has now become kind of like our Monday. So again, I am going to read a poem and you're going to have a poem for homework. I will upload that in Google Slides as well as put it on my uh, website. So our poem today is titled my hat is full of rabbits and I'm gonna go ahead and read it one time and then it's gonna be on you guys to read it tonight my hat is full of rabbits my cape is full of doves a playing card is up my sleeve and some are in my gloves a wand is in my pocket with handkerchiefs and flowers my coat has things like ropes and rings with mystifying powers I have my staff and juggling clubs my mirrors cups and dice my crystal ball my smoke machine and fancy dancing mice I'm ready for my magic show there's just one problem here my elephant is on my lap and will not disappear that is your poem titled my hat is full of rabbits and again even though today is Tuesday Tuesdays are our new Mondays and your homework is to read a poem for writing today we've got two things that we're gonna do first thing is is I want you to just journal write. you can do that on paper or you can do it on a Google Docs I know uh, Carter has been sharing his journal entries, journal writings, with me through a Google Doc form, and that is perfectly fine. If you want to write it just on paper, that is okay as well. But for writing this week, we're going to move right into poetry and poems, and our first poem that we're going to write specifically on Google Docs today is going to be what's known as an acrostic poem. An acrostic poem is going to be written by using your name. And that acrostic poem, a definition of an acrostic poem, is in which the first letter of each line spells out a word, message, or the alphabet. You can use a single word, or you can use a phrase to create your acrostic poem. Again, we're going to make an acrostic poem using our names, and I am going to show you an example using my name, Mr. Elliot. Here you can see I am in, like, Google Docs, and I have written my name, Mr. Elliot. After I put each letter, this I'm doing this for just an example. So after I put the M, I hit enter. I put the R, hit enter. I actually put a space because I'm doing Mr. and then Elliot. So after each time I put a letter in my name, I hit enter to get to the next line. You will not have to necessarily hit enter because you're going to write your name and then you're going to write a word or a phrase that describes you. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you the finished product when I get done. I went ahead and I finished up my acrostic poem. 
for Mr. Elliot, it is going to go up and down, vertical. So you got Mr. Elliot. And now I've created a poem out of that. Your poem does not necessarily have to rhyme. Don't think that a poem has to rhyme. Uh, we like poems that rhyme because they help us um, read them and they're more enjoyable. But not every poem rhymes. As you can see, Mr. Elliot. My passion is teaching. Relaxing, relaxing naps are sometimes needed. Every child matters. Learning and loving, I give my best at my job. Outstanding students truly make a difference. Teaching is my passion. And that is my acrostic poem. So there you go, guys, for writing. Don't forget, you got a journal entry. It can be about anything that you want it to be. And then you got an acrostic poem. You can use my example to help you. Remember, write your name vertical and then write a word or a phrase that talks about you. That's your, that's your writing assignment.